made a little mistake and put some chlorine and ammonia together. I don't think she'll do it anymore. You again, Severance. Are you all right? I think so, Miss Beck. I didn't realize it was the ammonia. Good thing I was here. She could have been hurt. What were you doing in here, Jackson? Why aren't you on the ward where you belong? Oh, now I see what happened. I don't give a damn what the two of you do outside this hospital. But in here, you're as bad as the ammonia and chlorine. Now get out of here, Jackson. This is a hospital laboratory, not a motel room. I don't want to see you in here again. Do you understand me? I think I do, Miss Beck. Everything's all right. Go back to your stations. As for you, Severance, I'll deal with you later. You've already kept me over time. I want you in my office first thing tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, Miss Beck. You'll be a lot sorrier if you're ever out of line with me again. She's the queen mother. God, she's a pain in the ass. She can't help it if she's getting to see her. Oh, oh, listen. I better give you your mail before I forget it and walk off with it. Mm -hmm. in your name if I knew it would upset you like this. You sent it? Martha, what's the matter with my little girl? Stop it, Mama. I'm not your little girl. It isn't some man you're mixed up with, is oh, it? Oh, Mama, please. Oh, why don't you leave your daughter alone? Can't you see how upset she is? She's been mean to me all day long. Now I'm going to lie down in my own bed. That's a good idea, Mama. I'll call you when supper's ready. Thanks for the April Fool's Day joke. Oh, come on, Martha. For Christ's sake, what kind of a friend do you think I am? Sure, I sent in your name. What'd you do it for? Well, you just look at this. No more lonely nights for these two lucky people. But was it really luck? No, it was Aunt Carrie who brought them together. She can open the door to exciting new friendships for you. Why not drop her a line? It may change your lonely life. Martha, you just need a man. Okay, honey, you're a little on the heavy side, but you're not an old bag, you know. You could be pretty sexy with the right man. Come on. Let's fill it out. What you got to lose? Let's see it. Here, before you change your mind. Go on, I'll, I'll help you with it. Where's the pen? You can't. You sure this is all right? What you got to lose? God, what questions. Do I have to tell the truth? So who's putting you on the witness stand? 
I suppose there's no harm in it. You think someone will really write to me? Well, there's only one way to find out. Someday you might even thank me for this. Dear Martha, I hope you will allow me the liberty of addressing you by your Christian name. To tell you the truth, I don't quite know how to begin this letter to you, because I must confess, this is the first letter of this sort I have ever written. Would you like to know a little bit about me? I'm 34, and I've been told I'm not a bad-looking fellow. I am in the importing business from Spain, my mother country. I live alone here in this apartment, much too large for a bachelor, but I hope someday to share it with a wife. Why did I choose you for my debut friendship letter? Because you are a nurse, and therefore I know I have a full heart with a great capacity for comfort and love. Your friend, Raymond Fernandez. Mm -hmm. I must confess to you, your charming letters have cheered my life. Dear Raymond, thanks for your picture. You are exactly as I imagined. Here is one of me. Oh, it doesn't do me justice. I want you to call me Ray. Only one woman ever did that. A childhood sweetheart. Long ago. The day I find a letter from you always goes so much better. Send me a lock of your hair. Dearest, the scarf was so beautiful. I will try to come and see you and Mother. I can't wait till you arrive. Oh, I still can't move. That was a wonderful dinner. I made the pecan pie. Oh, the very best part of the meal, Mrs. Beck. <laughs> you want another drink, Mama? Another drink? You don't usually let me have even one. This is a very special occasion. <laughs> what about you, Martha? You haven't even had your first. Well, maybe just a little one. I'm counting calories. I'll help you get it. Sorry, Mother's such a nuisance. I think she's adorable. Would you think I was terrible if I gave her a No. I want to be alone, too. Here, Mommy, you can take your vitamin pill. But I already had my vitamin pill this morning. You know I forgot to give it to you this morning. This one looks different. It's the new kind I got at the hospital. <laughs> How she babies me. <laughs> did you find your record, Mrs. Beck? Yes, I did. <laughs> See? This is the record I found for Raymond. I want you to play it because I like him. He's the nicest beau you ever had, Martha. <laughs> He's the Latin from Manhattan. <laughs> oh, Mama, that's not funny. No, I think it's charming. A record in my eyes. Thank you, Pedro Senor. Who wants to rumble with me? I do. I do. Do it yourself. We'll watch. She's asleep. Let's put her in the bedroom. No. She won't know a thing. Here. Give me your hand. 
Don't be a shy nerd. Darling, please don't cry again. I wouldn't be able to get on the train. I can't help it. I couldn't think of it going so soon. If I'm not home when those icons come, COD, I have lost hundreds of dollars. I couldn't even add today if it weren't for your loan. I would have to be back in New York today before the banks close. there? No, of course you shouldn't call the police. The wonderful Bonnie. She can't live without me. Can't I talk to the poor darling? Oh, no. She doesn't even know I'm calling. I'm calling you from my apartment. Oh. You don't know how sick she is from all that gas. We can thank our lucky stars that I got to her in time. What a story for the newspapers. What? Oh, get away from her. Leave her alone. Ray? Um, oh, no. That was my new little puppy. He was jumping all over Mop, and I was afraid he was going to wake her up. Did I say that? Oh, well, um. I'm just so nervous. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, no, she's here in my apartment, in my bed. Oh, I wouldn't leave her alone. I, I, I don't know what she'd do. Oh, no, she, she can't talk to you. She's unconscious. Oh, uh, oh, Ray. Ray, I want to die. I want to die. I can hear her. Let me talk to her. You don't love her and she wants to die. She says you'll read about it in the papers when she kills herself. Tell her I love her. Wait a minute, Ray. He says he loves you. Ray? I think she'll come to the phone now. Hello? Ray? Darling, I didn't mean it. Ray, listen, you better come down here. You don't. I, I, I'll kill myself, I swear. Oh, I can't get away now, sweetheart. Would you like to come up here for a little visit? You crazy? Now 
that you know everything about me. You still love me? Yes. You would still commit suicide for me? Yes. You don't want to call the police? You don't want to sue me? to the Acker woman. Wait until after then. You've got to go back to Mobile anyway. You can't leave your mother with that woman forever. Go back to the hospital. How can I? Knowing you're with another woman. I won't touch her, I promise. I'll get everything from her before the wedding. There'll be no honeymoon? I'll dump her right away. It's not like this. And you'll come back to Mobile? Yes. We'll work our future out together. I promise. All right. After Mrs. Flynn called to say you'd gone to New York, I came in here to find the assignment chart. I'm afraid you left some of your other torrid correspondence with a Mr. Fernandez in New York. I think you'd better take it with you. I don't think our board of directors would look kindly on our supervisor of nurses involved in a lonely heart scandal. Dare you go through my desk? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not so sure Hitler wasn't right about you people. Think. Get out of here before I forget I'm a gentleman. You bet I'm getting out of here. And don't make that check out to Martha Beck. Make it out to Mrs. Raymond Fernandez. What do you think I am? I went to New York to be married. Two can live as cheaply as one, darling. Let me congratulate the groom. Ha, ah, this is funny, Ray. What do you mean, stealing the best friend a girl ever had? Yeah. Now, listen, now that you two have been spliced, I... Spliced? Married, Ray? Uh-huh. Now, don't you be a stranger here. Okay. Here she is. Hi. You told her we're married? Uh-huh. Mama, too. Jesus, Martha, I go to New Jersey next week to marry Doris Acker. How am I going to bring her back here if you're here? It's impossible. You know I've got to continue my business. Don't worry, I'll think of something. <laughs> now what's the matter? Oh, that's Mama. She doesn't want to go to New York. Martha, that's completely out of the question. I mean it. Look, you say you love me. Okay, that you're going to kill yourself if you can't come up here. Okay, but you can't bring the old lady. What else am I going to do with her? Get rid of her, choke her. I don't care what the hell you do with her. But you can't bring her up here. You understand? Yeah, I understand. I'll wait outside, Mrs. Fernandez, while you say goodbye to her. I have to go now, Mama. Go. Go. I never want to see you again. Mama, don't talk like that. You're leaving me here to die. Now that you have a husband, you want to be rid of me. I told you, Mama, I'll have to find a job when I get to New York. Someone has to look after you. Don't worry. As soon as Ray and I are settled, we'll come back for you. It's a lie. It's a lie you want to be rid of me. You're digging my grave because you're killing me, believing me. You're killing me. Goodbye, Mama. Martha, don't go. I'm sorry for what I said. Take me with you. I won't be any trouble, I promise you. Please don't leave me. I'm afraid, Mama! 
Martha, don't go. It's too bad when they get senile. You can begin filling me at the first of the month at the New York address. Bye. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Justice of the Peace of Morris County, New Jersey, I hereby pronounce you, Doris Acker, and you, Raymond Fernandez, man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Aren't you going to congratulate me too, Mrs. Beth? Oh, I think you should call my sister Martha. Martha. Your car drives very well, Doris. Our car, darling. Goodbye, Morristown High School. See you in the fall. I can't wait to see the expression on my kids' faces when I tell them. Boys and girls, from now on, you are to address me as Mrs. Fernandez. Did they think you would stay a spinster forever? Is there something wrong with that word, darling? Oh, my English. Doesn't that mean maiden? Oh, <laughs> you are adorable. <laughs> I just can't wait to see our apartment. Oh, beautiful for space, sky for amber waves of grain. For purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his taken her things last night. You should have left them for me to do later the way I always do. And now she wants them back. 
She's furious. Where is she? In the bedroom. She's packing. Good morning. I'm leaving. Already? That was a pretty short honeymoon. Honeymoon? You ought to tell your brother what's supposed to happen on a honeymoon. Before I go, I want my ring and my money belt. Your what? My two rings and my money belt with the $2,000 in it. I don't know what you're talking about. Somebody took them. Now, see here. Do you know what happens to people who make false accusations? They get sued. I want my ring and my money. You lower your voice. You're not in your classroom now. You give me back my things or I'll make plenty of trouble for you. How dare you talk to my brother like that? And as for trouble, I wonder what the principal of your school would say if he saw some of those letters you wrote to my brother. I tell you, I was shocked to see such things from a school teacher. Don't they have a PTA out there? I'm leaving now. I guess I'm lucky I still have my car keys. So who's stopping you? Why don't you let your brother talk for himself? You act more like a mother than a sister. Ray, you haven't said one word. Are you afraid of her or something? Get out of here. I'm going. This isn't the end. You'll hear from my lawyer. Get the hell out of here. Oh, she's a slob. Took me half an hour to clean up that bedroom. I think I'll put this on. Might be cold on that boat. Oh, I'm finally gonna get to see New York. And the boat ride is the best way to do it. Who's that to? A lady from Missouri. Missouri Young. Come on, let's go, let's go. Because she'll give me $4,000 to marry her. Isn't that a good enough reason? Mm. Here, you can hold this while I lock the door. Charles Martin, where'd you think of that name? All she wants is a husband around when a bambino was born, so her mother and father won't disinherit her. <laughs> She's through with men. Oh, they all say that after they've been knocked up. Knocked up? Pregnant. Oh. I'm right that you'll marry her. In your next letter, you better tell her that your married sister, Mrs. Beck, is coming along with you. Excellent idea, Mrs. Beck. Hmm. Well, this is it, kids. It's not Tara. It's not even Little Rock. Your parents have a nice place there? And if it wasn't for a certain married son of a bitch down there, I would be home right now. Well, there's a small apartment. Well, it's the best I could do. I didn't know you were coming until last week. Well, I wish you'd gotten a place with twin beds. I don't like sharing a double bed. Anyhow, not with a woman. Well, you could always sleep in here. After all, Charles and I all married. <laughs> you know, you are much cuter than your picture. <laughs> no, 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 not cuter. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> sexier. <laughs> I thought you were through with men. You sound just like my mama. Oh, <gasps> see. I think I will phone Mom and Papa. <laughs> well, now that I can produce a husband, I might just as well start the reconciliation. <laughs> what reconciliation? Well, I'll give him the address. They still don't even know where I am. Then I will introduce them to their new son-in-law right on the phone. <laughs> My dark and handsome husband. <laughs> <laughs> And little old sister nurse, who has come all the way from New York just to take care of me while I have my baby. Now wait till tomorrow, Michael. 
so tired to charm them. Oh. I think we should all go to sleep now. Oh, well, well, in that case, I just run down and lock up my new uh, second hand car. <laughs> I won't fetch up something for Charles anyway. <laughs> I'll be right back, folks. Was all the money in the envelope? Mm, every cent. She was as good as her word. Well, now we ought to get out of here. Oh, Martha, that's not fair. Not fair? Why well, wait around till she tells her parents about us? That wasn't part of the deal. I think we ought to get out of here before something happens. I'll talk her out of that in the morning. Well, I don't like her. Martha, we are exhausted. At least let's stay the night. God, here she comes. I don't know what you two people are going to do, but I'm going to take a bath. I brought you up your wedding present. A present? That wasn't necessary. Well, for whatever the reason, we all married. <laughs> all fine, sealed, and legal, right? Of course, of course. And I must say, you did keep your part of the bargain. Mm -hmm. Open up your present. I'm dying to see it on you. Something to wear. Open it up, you see. Okay. Oh, darling, you look irresistible. It's not bad, is it? He's all gone. Hmm. I wonder why I never thought of that. <laughs> What's going on in here? How do you like your brother with his new little addition? What, a wig? It's not a wig. That is a hair piece, Martha. <laughs> I think he looks divine in it. Where did you get it? I uh, bought it in New York just before we left. I thought it would be amusing to change my appearance a little. Well, it doesn't look too bad. I'll just have to get used to it, I guess. Well, I think we should all go to bed now. Myrtle, why don't you take a nice hot bath? Well, now, what is that supposed to mean? What do I smell or something? No, 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 no. My sister didn't mean anything. You know, she's so used to her hospital routine. Well, I am going to make up my bed. Good night, ladies. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. There's nothing better than a good hot soap. It really relaxes you. Why don't you try it? Well, maybe I will. I do feel a little peaky. She's in the bathtub. Not now, I'm tired. She might come in. You didn't care with Doris Acker. She made plenty of mistakes that night. Now go to bed. Keep your hands off her things. This whole thing must be handled with a little savoir faire. And you don't have it. Do you understand? Mm. 
Can't you sleep? You woke me up. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just restless. You want a sleeping pill? I got some. You have any other kind? What do you mean? Never mind. You wouldn't. You're too square. You sigh a lot, don't you? Nursing school, they taught us that people who sigh a lot are unstable. Is that your problem? No. I was just thinking about your brother <laughs> and how handsome he looked in that toupee I gave him. <laughs> he lied to you. I don't believe it. He never lies to me. Well, I think he's a little bit afraid of you. That's probably why he never married before. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I'm going to have to show him what to do. <laughs> you must think you're an authority. Well, I am pregnant. Not only are you pregnant, you are disgusting. You're the hottest bitch I've ever seen. And I don't have to take that from you. And let me tell you something. I'm in love with your brother. And if we decide to make a go of this marriage, which I think we'll do, and sooner than you think, but we get out of here before you can say Jack Robinson, we will go to Little Rock. But as a matter of fact, I will make all the arrangements on the phone with my papa tomorrow. Charles will fit right in with us. He has style. And you. Go right back to that, that, that hospital of yours where you can boss everybody around. Now, I'm going back to my husband. Damn it, Martha. What have you been saying to Myrtle? Well, we've been talking about quite a few things. Well, what? Well, mostly she's worried about whether you can screw or not. She didn't talk about anything like that. She certainly did. God damn it, Togo again. You see, you should have stayed in New York. I never should have let you come. Sure, then you can do what she wants. Why, that's one woman carrying on in there, another woman carrying on in here. Christ almighty, I'm earning my 4,000 tonight. This is the third time she came to me. If I want to screw her, she will be satisfied by now. I want her to go to sleep. Is that all you want from her? That's all, for Christ's sake. Okay, here. Give her these. Tell her that they're the kind of pills she was asking for. I... I... I don't feel any better, Charles. Oh, oh, I'm so sick. It, as soon as I took all them pills, I was... Once the bus starts, you go oh. to sleep. Oh. By the time you get a little rough, oh, you feel much better. Don't worry. What, what's the matter with me, Charles? What's the matter with me? Am I, am I going to die from all the pills? No, Martha, don't be silly. What? Relax. You must have been uh, allergic to this. Why, why, why are you putting me all alone on the bus? I'm so sick, John. I don't want to go by myself. I, I told 
want you. Now listen, listen. I'll call your mother and father and tell them to meet the bus. And then I'll drive your car down with all the rest of your things. Okay? Don't bring her along. I'm afraid of her. Don't no, bring her. No, no, no. She's going back to New York. I'll come all by myself. Huh? Just the two of us. Okay? Oh, oh, I'm so sick. Oh, oh I, feel, I feel so terrible. I feel so terrible. Look, it's almost time now. I gotta go. Go to sleep, huh? Go to sleep. Miss, what's the matter? Oh, my God, she's dead. Hello, operator. Yes, I'd like to make a collect call to Miss Evelyn Long, 205 Hasitanic Street, uh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Be careful. You'll strain yourself. Don't be silly. Very nice here, but I wish it was just the two of us. You told me the picture she sent you of her was taken 20 years ago. <sighs> Most of them do that. How did I know she was going to be different? You didn't tell me I'd have to stay at a motel all by myself. Well, I didn't know that her house was going to be full of guests for the music concerts. Well, why can't you stay at the motel, too? Come on, Martha. How would that look? Well, anyway, you're not going to marry her. You promised. We'll go back to New York and find a nice little house in the suburbs, okay? Uh-huh. You also didn't know when she sent you that picture of her mansion, it was only just a boarding house, did you? Okay, Martha. What the hell are you complaining about? People who have houses in the suburbs are supposed to take summer vacations. Oh, we're having ours. What kind of a vacation is it for me? I'm not going back to the hot city yet. comes lunch. <laughs> oh. Oh. And I should have let your brother help me get it. I didn't realize it was so heavy. <sighs> well, I'm hot. I think I'll join Ray. Will you come? Later. Here I come. Ready or not? Good time. Well, since you ask, I don't like staying at that motel by myself. Uh, and I do feel terrible. But this is the last week of Tanglewood, and then everybody will go home, and then I'll have room for you, too. I was lucky I even had room enough for Ray. Well, I have slept in the same room as my brother before. That was
was long ago when we were still children. <laughs> Shall we have a picnic? I'm starved. Well, I'm hot. I think I'll go in and cool off. Yeah, good. Go ahead, Martha. Everyone will uh, get the picnic ready. I'm really sorry she doesn't seem to be having a very good time. Don't be silly. Oh, I wish I could do something to please her. She's moody. <laughs> it's not your fault. Eh? Hey, hey. She's enjoying the water. You want to know something? What? You lie down here. No one can see you. It's a fascinating piece of information. What's that supposed to mean? Why don't you try it and find out? All right, I will. <laughs> you promised! What is it? She saw us. Look. in New York State. Don't be angry with me. And I'm the one who should be angry. Do you realize that with your stupid jealousy, you could have gotten me into trouble? Huh? 
You want me to go to jail? I'd rather see you in jail than on that blanket making love to another woman. You know, you go to jail, too. <sighs> Knowing that you are locked up away from other women, I'd go, too. Well, I think we better get you that house in the suburbs. Hello, Lucy. Janet, I wake you? I'm so excited. Listen, I finally got a letter. No, you don't understand. The club. Oh. Charles Martin, isn't that cute? Well, that's the only thing. He's a little on the young side. Well, 45, Lucy. Oh, dear, and I lied and gave him my age as 56. But it's such a sweet letter. Well, now, listen, Lucy. He lives with his sister, and she picked my name out of the list. She told him to write me. No, dear, his sister. Oh, no, they don't live in Albany. Oh, wait a minute. Valley Stream, Long Island. That's a suburb of New York City. He even sent me a picture of the house. Yes, well, remember, Lucy, not a word about all this to Albert and Sarah. I promised I'd forget the Friendship Club. But there's no harm in writing to somebody who's so gentle and, and refined and whose sister is a nurse. Hmm. Oh. Now, don't they sound wonderful? Well, of course, I'm going to answer. This is his first letter through the club, and to me. He's so cute, he calls it his debut letter. All right. What's your advice? Oh, you're right. I was going to answer right away. You don't think a week's too long? I wouldn't want to hurt his feelings. Not for the world. You get it from Faith? No, just bills. Her name has been on that list for as long as I can remember. You think the old fool would jump when she finally got a nibble? You should have let me write a letter by myself. Maybe it wasn't convincing enough. You haven't paid December for my mother. They're getting nasty. God, we could use her 10,000. She's out of town. She'll answer. Yeah, maybe. Better get back in touch with the Downing woman. No. I'm not going to Michigan. No, she's too young. What do you mean, too young? You know what I mean. Don't eat candy at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's because you're making me nervous. You're nervous? How do you think I feel sitting around here day after day? Now I've been taken to reading these stupid magazines of yours. That's what you wanted. What I wanted? You wanted this house? You almost drowned yourself to get it. I suppose the next thing you'll do is cut your wrist. Or go out and get a job. Stop it! Or turn in the gas like the first time. Stop it! Maybe you want me dead! Dead? I'm dead. Finished! You call this place Valley Stream? <laughs> what a joke. One little jail after another with ten feet of grass between them. Valley stream, I hate it here. We could go someplace else. Where can we go? Can't even afford to pay for this rotten little house. I could go back to nursing. How are we gonna live on that? Besides, no woman's going to support me. No! I have to go back to work. And I can't invest everything in one old lady you choose for me. Besides, I detest all the ladies. I'm going to write to Delphine Dunning today. Look, I 
told you. When we get enough money, we can get married. And go someplace far away from here. Settle down. Someplace nice. Not the valley stream. When? If you do as I say, it could be soon. Maybe Faye will answer. Well, maybe. But if not, we go to Michigan. If you love me, you'll do it. I want to meet her alone this afternoon. I don't want to bring you into the picture until I see how I'm going to work it. You understand? Yes. I'll tell her that you're tired from the trip and that you're resting. I think of the 10,000 while I'm gone. That'll help pass the time more quickly. And then tonight, we'll celebrate the new year, just the two of us. We'll go someplace nice, OK? What are you doing in there? You'll see. I come. All set. How do I look? Mm, a little too old for me, but good enough to eat. Mm. You know, I think I will rest. I'm tired. Wish me luck and think of that 10,000. First, I gotta pee. I'm dying. What were you holding it in for? Where do you find a bathroom? In a church. What were you doing in a church? We went to pray together, and we lit a candle for the dear departed Mr. Pay, whose loving spirit brought us together. She sounds senile. Mm. She's getting near that age. She is at least 10 years older than she said. 65 if she's a day. She didn't think you were too young for her? Not at all. I remind her of the late and lamented Mr. Fay when they were married. She doesn't seem to realize how long ago that must have been. She says we have so much in common that a little difference of age doesn't matter. You should have seen her face when I said I was also a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> you know who she reminds me of? Who? Your mother. My mother's not Catholic. Well, you better be tomorrow when you meet Janet. Tomorrow? Yes, for spending the day with her. To celebrate the new year. What about the 10,000? She's got it. And she can't stop talking about it. She tells me everything. It's in cash and in three banks. And don't you worry. I'll get it from the silly old bitch. Gotta work fast, though. Very good. And we gotta watch out for is the, the daughter and the husband. Now, what would you like to do most for the last time in the old year? Guess. I'm not too old for you? A man of 45? No, you're not. Fifty nurses under your supervision. Martha, I don't know how you do it. Isn't she wonderful, Lucy? So much responsibility and so young. I should say so. I don't know how the hospital can do without you for a whole month, Mrs. Begg. Well, I just had to come up and spend some time with my successful brother. <laughs> when he wrote me about that new house he was buying, I said to myself, I've got to go up there and talk him out of the idea. At least if he was married. He's my older brother, but he 
can be impractical. I guess that's because of your European upbringing, Charles. Yes, Janet. And my sister was fortunate being brought up in America, although the separation was terrible for us. Well, I'm glad. You're so debonair, so sort of cute with your little <laughs> accent. And even though you speak differently, I'd know you were brother and sister anywhere. Wouldn't you, Janet? Oh, yes, they're like two peas in a pod. I'm having such a good time with these people. I hate to go, but I know the three of you have lots to do. Can I tell her, Charles? Go ahead. Lucy, Charles and I are going to be married. Janet, that's wonderful. <laughs> I can't believe it. You're the first to know, except for Martha, of course. Oh, it's like a dream. I can't believe it after all these years. Well, it's not a dream, and you're right. The three of us have a lot to discuss. So I'd better run along. Of course, I'll phone you later this evening. I won't be here. Tonight I'm taking Charles and Martha to dinner. Oh, how nice. But call me early tomorrow morning before mass, hmm? Goodbye, you two. It's been a treat meeting you. Congratulations. <laughs> and Happy New Year. Well, how did you like the hat she had on? I made it. I know, dear. You wrote me all about them. Would you like to see a new one I just made for myself? Oh, I'd love to, Jack. Yes, indeed. All right. I'll model it for you. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful, Janet. And I made it myself. Don't you think it's cute? I do think it's adorable. Well, Janet, with a talent like that, you are missing a golden opportunity. Of course. If you had a little shop in New York. Well, it would have to be in an inexpensive neighborhood. Uh, where the rent would be reasonable, like uh, Valley Stream. Oh, Janet, what a business you could have for yourself. A business? Well, she'd just rake in the money, wouldn't she, Charles? She would indeed. Of course, you would need some capital to get started. Yeah. And how much money do you think she'd need, Charles? Oh, I'd say about uh, ten thousand dollars. Janet, if you decide to do this, don't worry about money. I have a little savings at home. What better use could I put it to than to help you get started? Oh, Martha, how sweet. Oh, how sweet you are, dear. But I don't need it. She doesn't know I have the money. Does she, Janet? How wonderful, Janet. Now, you two, just help yourselves to whatever your hearts desire. It's my treat. My, a dollar eighty-five for a veal cutlet. I think I'll have a pork chop. It's a better buy. Pork chop, please. But have whatever you want, Charles. Don't let me influence you. You too, Martha. I'll have the pork chop also, please. And don't skimp on his potatoes like you did on mine. What'll you have, Martha, dear? I'll have the veal cutlet. I don't care for pork chops. Veal cutlet for her. And go easy on the gravy. It looks starchy. Full of flour. I know this place. I eat here all the time. Uh, no. No, that's not the dessert. They're over this way. Come along. I wish I'd known you were going to... Sweep me off my feet and take me to New York with you. Why, dear? Well, because I never would have paid the hotel for January. Here it is only the first. I'll be checking out on Monday. I think I'll get me another cup of coffee. Oh, here, dear. Let me give you the dime. Forget it, Janet. I might want something else. That girl eats too much. Well, she always had a healthy appetite. We could have left first thing tomorrow, but uh, you want to go to Mass. Oh, yes. And then you do want to take your money out of the banks first thing Monday morning. You might need some for the deposit at the hat shop. And as I told you, you get a much better interest rate at my bank in Valley Stream. Oh, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then we leave immediately for your new home. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, I'm afraid we're not going to make it to Valley Stream before the banks close. You see, we shouldn't have stopped all that time for that big lunch. Wasn't necessary. Not at all. I told you, Janet, I get nauseous riding on an empty stomach. Did you want me to throw up? Yes. Besides, you took an awfully long time at the bank. Would have been much quicker if you'd taken all the money out in cash. And ride around with $10,000? That's cute. Really, Martha, you don't have as much common sense as I thought. I want my two best girls to stop arguing this very minute. I think I'll look at my beautiful pictures for a while. You sure there's a nice place for them? Oh, yes, of course. We'll hang them up this evening. Mm, good. That's the only thing in Albany I'll miss, my lovely church. Everything I have goes to them, you know. There's a nice uh, Catholic church in Valley Stream, too. I'm sure you'll like it. I know I will. But I'll miss St. Agnes. And of course, I'll miss Albert and Sarah, too. Do you really think it was right leaving like this without telling them a word? Sure. Think of the exciting surprise it will be tomorrow when you call them and tell them, I am now. Mrs. Charles Martin. <laughs> Mrs. Charles Martin. Martin's a hat shop. And that's he. There they are. Safe and sound in your new home. That was a delicious supper, Martha. You sure I can't help you now that we have the pictures out? No, dear. You and Charles have business to attend to. Go ahead and use the table if you like. I'll clean up in the kitchen. That's a good idea. Janet, why don't you get your purse? We can go over everything together right now. All right. Fine. I suggest you deposit it in one lump sum, my bank. But you better keep a thousand in cash in case we find a nice store for you. They might not take a check. Even with your efforts, sir? I don't know everyone in Valley Stream, darling. All right. But the jewelry goes in the safe deposit box. Huh? Not until after the wedding. I want my bride to look her very Oh, yes. <laughs> of course. Now, what are you writing on those sheets of paper? I have a marvelous idea. Surprise? Just sign your name at the bottom of the page. And then what happens? And then I take them out tonight and I mail them. One to your daughter, Sarah. One to Lucy, and one to Father Nicholas of St. Agnes. They get them tomorrow morning. What's this from Janet, they say? Surprise. What does that mean? Then they ring each other up on the telephone. Surprise? What's the surprise? And then, first thing tomorrow morning, we print up some wedding announcements. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Martin take pleasure in announcing their marriage January 3rd in Valley Stream, Long Island. Mrs. Martin is the former Janet Fay of Albany, New York. After a wedding trip to Miami, Florida, they will make their home in Valley Stream, Long Island, New York. A wedding trip to Miami, Florida? I might as well tell you now, that was my surprise. For you. Oh. Oh, Charles. Mm. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> what a cute idea. <laughs> Why 
while you have your fountain pen in hand, why don't you endorse the checks? Endorse them tonight? Well, I have to be out of the house very early in the morning to get the wedding announcements printed in time. I could stop at the bank first thing and put them in for you. Hmm? Oh, Charles, you better hide them. Oh, yes. I have a nice secret place in this cellar. I take them down there this very minute. And now, why don't you address the envelopes for the surprise letters so I can mail them when I come back up? We need another surprise letter for my nephew in Utica. Fine. Do a few more. We can always use an extra one or two. Martha, you better come down the cellar with me. You can help me hide Janet's check. No, you want me to help, dear? No, darling, it's very dark down there. You might hurt yourself on the stairs. You finish addressing your letters while we do it. All right. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it. What do you mean you wouldn't believe it? You saw. That's what you get for being kind to a woman and giving her affection. I bolted the door from the inside. Charles, what's the matter? I can't open the door. Are you all right down there? One minute, Janet. I'll be right up. I'll be right back. Oh, dear God. Can't I open it from this side? No, Janet, it won't open. My goodness, shall I get help? No, no, there's an outside entrance down here from the backyard. But it's locked also. It's going to take me some time to get it open, dear. You might as well get ready for bed in the meantime. Oh, poor Martha. She's so tired. Oh, she's fine. Martha doesn't mind a bit. What's the matter? Can't you sleep? No, I'm terribly restless. I guess I'm not used to a strange bedroom. Do you want a sleeping pill? No. No, I never take pills. Not even aspirin. It's too bad. Oh, I'm keeping you up. I'm sorry. You must be tired locked up in the cellar for over an hour. Janet, what's worrying you? Well, the outside cellar door. When you and Charles got out of. Do you recall whether you locked that behind you? We have quite a bit of money here in the house to be sleeping with the door unlocked. All the doors are locked tight. Now go back to sleep. You have a big day tomorrow. I'll try. Well, do you think poor Charles is all right in that little couch in there? He's fine. Now, do you have any more questions or can I go to sleep? Well, if you weren't so tired, I would like to have a little talk with you. About what? Well, about your brother. And about you, too, I suppose. What about us? Well, here I am sleeping under the same roof with you, and I hardly know you. Well, what do you want to know about us? Well, I really know hardly anything about Charles. Well, about his past, for instance. I do think two in the morning is a little late for family histories. Well, here I've endorsed all my checks. Now I don't even know where they are. For God's sakes, Janet, you asked him to hide them for you in the cellar. I know, but now I don't even know where they are. And you were down there such a long time. 
We were locked in. I know. But right after you came up, Charles went out to mail my letters, and you and I came to bed, and nobody told me where you put them. Do you want me to take you down there and show them to you? Yes. Well, I'm not going to. Get back into bed and go to sleep. And I won't tell him about this conversation. I can't sleep. I'm very upset. What are you upset about now? Oh, I should have called Albert and Sarah. I should have told them what I was doing. They probably phoned the hotel and were told I checked out. They're probably worried to death about me right this minute. They'll get the surprise letters in the morning. How do you know about the surprise letters? You weren't even in the room when we did them. I overheard you from the kitchen. Why were you eavesdropping on us? Janet, what's the matter with you? I wish you'd let me give you a sleeping pill. You're getting yourself all upset over nothing. No, I want to use the telephone. Where is it? What do you want to use the phone for? I want to speak to Albert and Sarah. I want to tell them where I am. Well, you can't. The phone is in the living room. You're not going to wake my brother in the middle of the night. You can do it in the morning. No, I want to do it now. I want Sarah's advice about those checks I signed over to your brother. Now, you get back into bed and we'll settle it all in the morning. Well, why can't I call her now? Because it's late, that's why. You'll upset her. She won't be upset. She'll be glad to hear from me. Then you can call her in the morning. Now get back to bed. Janet, I'm going to give you a few sleeping pills. No, no pills. Don't push me like that. No, I'm going to call this minute. For God's sake, Ray, give this woman back her checks. Take her to the train and send her back to Albany. Ray. Who's Ray? Who's Ray? I want to call my daughter and she won't let me. She slapped me. Why is she calling you Ray? I'm frightened. She wants her checks back. I heard. Oh, no. I don't want them back, Charles. I just want to call Sarah. I, I don't want her to worry about me, that's all. Can I call her? Please, Charles, can I call her? I'll, I'll call her and surprise her now, all right? She's worried about me. Please, let me call her. First, let Martha give you a few pills. You're very upset. <laughs> They'll help calm you down. And then you can call your daughter. No! No. Why do you want to give me pills? I'm afraid of pills. Ray, what are we going to do with her? Ray, Ray, I, I don't want the checks back. No, I don't want them back. And I'm not going to call Sarah. All right, all right, Ray. I just want to go for a little walk by myself and think things over. I just want to get a little fresh air. And then I'll be right back. I don't want the checks. Leave them in the cellar where you get them. Please, go to bed. I'll be right back. I'll just take my jewelry out of this trunk. Put it in my overcoat, that's all. Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. It isn't in here. Somebody took my jewelry. Where is it? I can't find it. It isn't in here. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'll just go for a walk, and then I'll be right back. I'll you leave the chair here and the jewelry. I won't take anything with me, nothing at all. I won't even get dressed. I no! Ah! Hit him again! Here, tie on. What 
Here, use this as a tourniquet. Help me. God. You're shivering. Do you have a fever? What's the matter? Nothing. It's just that you're sweating so. Take off your top. It's wet. You'll catch a cold. knows what happened. Only you and me. I want to go lie down for a while. I need a drink. Want the light on or off? Leave it on. I want to make love. Dear Sarah and Albert, by the time you receive this letter, I will be Mrs. Charles Martin, On my way to Florida, where I will live with my new husband. takes these with her wherever she goes. Now, isn't that cute? Dear Charles, thank you for your thoughtful Christmas greetings. Christmas gives me an empty, lonely feeling. Raynell finally got a tricycle for Christmas. She just can't wait for spring to use it. She is anxious to meet her Uncle Charles and was very happy when I told her that you and Aunt Martha were thinking of coming out here for a visit. And so, boys and girls, on the 15th of April, in the year 1865, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States of America, died. Each year, on February the 12th, 
his birthday, a grateful country celebrates the hero who saved the Union. What celebrates, Mommy? Well, celebrates is what we did today for Lincoln's birthday, sweetheart. You stayed home from nursery school, didn't you? And we had flags at the supper table. And we even had our birthday cake for President Lincoln. <laughs> right. Well, the bad man who shot President Lincoln. Oh, well. I guess he was sorry for what he did. Is Daddy in heaven a hero like President Lincoln? Yes, darling. And now Mummy's going to put you to bed. Go kiss Uncle Charles and Aunt Martha goodnight. <sighs> Why, Raynell? What's the matter with you? She'll never forgive me for swabbing her throat. But she had that cold three weeks ago. Oh, Raynell, and Aunt Martha was going to buy you that puppy that you want so badly. <laughs> All right, young lady, come to bed. You're overtired, I guess. I'll just take her upstairs and put her to bed. I'll be right down. A birthday party for President Lincoln. Now I've seen everything. Shh, she'll hear you. If we stay here much longer, she'll have me sewing flags like Betsy Ross. Who's Betsy Ross? Oh, never mind. Come into the den where we can talk. I'm sick of her. I have that goddamn health food. She's hungry all the time. And in more than one way. I'm going to Grand Rapids tomorrow, hmm? for a shopping trip. Just you and me. I'm as hungry as you, darling. Be patient for a little while longer. You've been saying that for three weeks. No. She told me this afternoon she's very close to a deal on the property in Muskegon. I thought you were her financial advisor. I am. But you know, she's not stupid. So I've got to take it slow and easy with her. She's got even more than we thought. He had plenty of insurance. She never wrote me the half of it. Mm. That's why it's taking time to turn everything into cash. And then? Yeah. And then she thinks we're driving to New York where I marry her. But we get rid of her and the kid on the way. She's in love with you. I can tell. So what? Uh, Perfect, if you'll just be patient for a little while longer. And after that, no more letters and no more meetings. No more, I promise. We get married. Okay? It's funny you should always come in here. Why do you say that, Delphine? Well, because John always preferred coming in here. Instead of sitting in the living room, he used to say it was more cozy. You know, that is funny, because I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what we celebrate day after tomorrow. President Washington's birthday. Oh, no, dear. That's not until the 22nd. But at least you got it in the right month. Charles is pulling your leg, Delphine. Matter of fact, he just asked me to drive into Grand Rapids tomorrow afternoon to help pick out your Valentine's Day present. Oh, Charles. Oh, that's sweet of you. <laughs> I wonder if Raynell found her puppy. They should be back by now. My goodness, how that child needs a father. She's really taken to Charles, don't you think so? I suppose so. But if you ask me, you spoiled her. You fussed too much over her. Like this morning. She could have gone to nursery school. I told you there was nothing wrong with her stomach. You got yourself so upset over her that now you're the one who's sick. 
I guess we just didn't want you to go to Grand Rapids today. Raynell wanted Charles to buy the puppy, and I wanted to be here alone with you. What for? I have to talk to you, Martha. It's important. I'm afraid I need your advice. What's the matter? May I be completely open and frank with you? Well, of course. What is it? I want to marry your brother right away before we go to New York. Why do you want to do that? Because I'm pregnant, that's why. Martha, Charles and I really do love each other. We intended to marry almost from the start. I guess we just got carried away, that's all. But you see, the thing is, I don't want him to know about this until after we're married. I don't want the fact that I'm going to have his child have anything to do with it. That's why I need your help. After all, you'll be my sister. I never had a sister. What do you want me to do, Delphi? I want you to suggest that we get married here, right away, tomorrow, on Valentine's Day. I promise. Look, I know you're upset. He wanted to be so sure that you wouldn't find out that there was anything going on between us. I think you're wonderful, Martha, with your old-fashioned values. Charles does, too. And he's just frightened to death that you'd find out we'd been sleeping together whenever you left the house. But we love each other so much, we just couldn't stop ourselves. You can understand that, can't you? Yes, I understand. Martha, why are you crying? I'm crying because I feel so sorry for you. Sorry for me? Or well, why? Why should you feel sorry for me? I'm sorry for you because my brother will never marry you now, that's why. What do you mean? You'll find out when you tell him he has to marry you because he's knocked you up. You make it sound so awful. Well, that's the situation, isn't it? Well, then you've got to help me, Martha. He mustn't know. You want me to lie to my own brother? Never. You've ruined everything. Oh, God. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> You're in quite a spot, aren't you? Besides losing Charles, you'll be pregnant without a husband. Oh. All right, I'll help you. But you've got to do exactly as I tell you. Get into bed. I'll be right back. Oh. Here. Take these. What are they? Well, they're allergy pills, but if you take enough of them, they'll abort the baby. Oh, no. No, I don't want to do that. Delphine, don't be stupid. You'll have another child after you're married. This will solve the whole problem. They won't make me sick, will they? Would I give them to you if I thought they would? Now hurry up before I change my mind. Here, you have to take more. You need more than those. Uh-oh. I think I have to go into the bathroom for a minute. I don't have to. <laughs> it was a false alarm. Oh, my goodness. I feel woozy. I think I'd better get into bed. Oh. Oh, Martha. I don't feel good. in the bedroom closet. What happened to her? 
She found out everything. What? How? How the hell do I know, Ray? She was going to call the police. You gave her the pill. But I couldn't get enough down her. What are you going to do with her? She keeps a gun in her drawer. Get it. millions of questions, and she's no baby. So put a pillow over her face, uh, smother her. I don't care what you do, but get rid of her. You might as well come upstairs. There's no point in digging twice. You can go down now. Everything's taken care of. Go upstairs and back while I finish up down. We better get out of here fast. Where are we going now, Ray? I can arrange a meeting with a very nice woman in New Orleans. We can stay there right with your Mardi Gras. Wouldn't you like that, sweetheart? Yes, darling. I'd like Hold me. And you won't make love to her. <laughs> Do you have to ask that again? Didn't I promise? I didn't touch Delphine, did I? After a whole month, I never laid a hand on her. <laughs> Don't you trust me? Yes, I trust you, my darling. Spend the rest of the winter in New Orleans. This one will be the absolute last. I promise. And then in the spring, I'll give. Is this the police? This is a neighbor of Mrs. Delphine Downing, 3435 Byron Center Road. 
Something's wrong over there. How do I know? I heard a shot, that's how I know. And now something peculiar is going on in the cellar. 34, 35. That's right. Never mind who I am. Just get over there. Well, get rid of them and finish packing. You won't need that now. Besides, I never liked it on you. Take care of everything. Martha, time to go to court. Are you nervous? Yeah. Oh. First day is the worst. It's going to be a long trial. You'll get used to it. At least I'll see Ray again. In four months now. They tell me he still loves me, but they've been telling me so many lies, I don't know who to believe anymore. Well, then I have something nice for you. It's a letter from him. They're allowing me to give it to you. Can I be alone with it, please? I'll wait for you over there by the window. Dear Martha, I would like to shout my love to the world. Perhaps someday when we are old and gray, we shall have a little time to spend together. But no matter what happens to us, I want you to remember one thing. You and you alone are the one and only woman I have ever loved. You are the one and only woman I will ever love. Now and beyond the grave. Ray.